Hey guys, this is Dallas Bono, and today I'm going to go over finding on the ball of your foot or on the high ball of the foot or flat footed, which one of those is better to fight, especially on the street. And uh, you're going to be surprised with the answer, so stay tuned. Alright guys, uh, a lot of you guys, will, you know, for street fighting, you tend to fight using either the boxer's footwork or the Muay Thai style fighter's footwork. And a lot of times they're like way up high on the balls of the foot, you know, moving around, you know, almost on the toes and the, the tips of the ball of the foot, you know, so they can throw the push kicks, the round kicks, and move around, and they're going to be quicker and more faster. It will work, but you know what, on the street, there's a lot of, you know, gravel, cracks in the ground, depending on what kind of shoes you're wearing, uh, it could stick, you could fall, put your foot in the, in the crack and fall, and chip over, and uh, you can just uh, wrench your foot, or sprain an ankle, fall down on the ground, that gives the other guy the advantage, you're going to top you and start hitting you, okay? So, while it, is, it has an advantage as far as quickness and being able to move a lot better, the problem with it is, it's real dangerous, especially when, in, when you're in a street fight. It may work on a flat surface, like in a ring, but on the street, it's very vulnerable to injury, okay? So, you got to be careful about using that. When you use a more lower part of the ball of the foot, like the middle to the back of the ball of the foot, which is the preferred way I would, I would suggest for you to use, it gives you a better, a better chance to fight, it gives you more stability. It might not be as quick as the first way, but it's more stable and more stronger, especially when the guy's fighting in a close quarter, you know, and that's what's usually going to happen in, in, a, in a street fight. It's not a ring fight where you guys are separated all the time and moving around and everything, you don't get that chance. It's like 8 to 10 seconds of raw attack you know, berserker type fight, and so usually there's no defense, it's all offense, just just going out on it, and so that kind of fighting, you, get, you have to have a really good stable uh, uh, foot position, because if you don't, you hit the ground, and they're punching on you, kicking on you, and it's pretty much over, alright, so another thing that's really important in that respect is in the back of your big toe, there's a trigger point, and if that part of the toe is not accessed by putting pressure on it, then you're only going to use like 35 to 40 percent of your leg muscles, okay? Because what happens is if you raise up too high off the ball of the foot and you decompress that area in the back of the ball of the foot or the back of the big toe of the foot, instantly the hamstring, the butt weaken. It just goes slack. The only thing you're going to have strong is the front thigh and maybe some of the calf muscles. But the moment you lower it down below the back of the big toe, instantly the hamstring, the glute, the front thigh, and the whole calf and ankle and foot muscles turn on. And it makes it more stable, more stronger. Now when you're fighting somebody in the street, you want overall strength and stability through the whole leg, not just part of the leg. So it's better to have it low that way. Okay, so try that and see what you think. When you, it's very easy to see the difference. It, it, it doesn't take very much. It's the razor on the ball of your foot, so it's only on your tiptoe, and hit the bag, and you're going to see it's going to bounce all over the place. As soon as you lower yourself down, past the big toe, all right, with maybe the back of the heels just a little bit off the ground, like half an inch off the ground, you're going to feel all that power immediately when you're hitting that bag. And you're going to see the difference. It's real simple to do. Okay, now. The next thing I want to teach you is flat-footed, okay, fighting flat-footed. To me, flat-footed fighting works really well in the street fight. And the reason why, guys, is, like I told you before, that pressure point behind the ball of the, or the, the big toe of the foot gives you solid strength in the whole leg. So when you're throwing punches, it gives you a lot of power in your strikes when you're hitting, okay? The next thing is, it gives you stability. When that other sucker is hitting you and swinging at you and you're taking the hit, it's not going to destabilize you and you're going to be able to take it and keep on going at the individual. And the reason why is because you're going to be solid to the ground and rooted and you're going to stick when you're on the ground and be able to hit hard. Okay? And the other thing too, guys, is if there's any kind of uh, object in the ground like a bottle, curb, crack in the ground, uh, sawdust, uh, gravel, uh, you know, piss, blood, whatever on the floor, you know, you, uh, beer dropped on the ground. You're not going to slip and slide all over the place because you're, you're taking big steps when you're striking, okay? Be able to grab the guy, throw him around, or what have you. 
And it works really well when you're fighting for street fight. Okay? Maybe in ring, it might not be so, so advantageous, but in the street, I guarantee you, that's the better type of footwork to work with. That, and then the, just slightly raising your foot or the heel off the ground. You're still engaging the whole legs of the body and giving you that extra power in your punch. Okay? So those footwork patterns are going to work really well. And that high, up on tiptoe type fighting, keep that for the ring. Okay? That's where it belongs. It doesn't belong on the street. It belongs in the ring. But the lower you know, heels off the ground slightly or flat on the ground, that's going to work better in a street fight. When you're flat on the ground, especially when you're close quarter, stay flat on the ground. When you're slightly apart where you can throw your punches, have the heels slightly off the ground. Those two patterns are going to work really well when you're fighting the street. Okay? Try it out, guys. Get your partner. Have them you know, go sparring lightly, like in the, if you were in the ring, and try the three different footwork patterns and see what you, what you think. And then have them start going hard. Okay? Maybe, maybe put a headgear on and your gloves. And, and let them put on gloves. You don't have gloves. And you let, him, let them hit you and you just block it. And see how that foot, check the three different types of footwork. Okay? One high on the ball of foot. The second one low or medium height with just the heels slightly off the ground. Okay? And with the heels on the ground, flat footed. Okay, and see which ones work better when someone's hitting you full blast with all their energy and all their might and all their um, weight behind their punch. See which one doesn't destabilize you. See which one does um, stable, unstabilize you and makes you fall all over the place and get you all, all over, throws you all over the place. And you're gonna see the difference and you see what's gonna work for you in a street fight in case you get into the one with somebody. And you're gonna see how your footwork is gonna be able to save the day when you're gonna need it. Okay. So don't train yourself just in one type of footwork pattern. Try the other ones because you just never know. Okay? Now I'm not saying that being on the balls, you know, high on the balls of your foot is, a, is, is no good, but it, is, it can be good if you're in the ring or if you're gonna, you know, maybe if you had the chance to be able to use your push kicks or round kicks, you know, then use them, you know. But for me, I would rather use that immediate, intermediate level, you know, heels slightly off the, uh, off the ground or flat-footed, that always works well in a street fight. promise you that it's going to be hard for them to destabilize you and make you lose your balance if you're going to fight that way. Okay? So try those out and see what you think and let me know how, how it's going to work for you. Alright guys, um, this is the end of the video and I just wanted to emphasize guys those three types of footwork patterns. And The reason why is because that's you usually in the ring you're going to see the first two. You very rarely see the last one, which is flat footed. But flat footed fighting is what you want to really need to fight in a street fight. Okay? Try that, and I guarantee you that you're going to have a lot more power and a lot more, more stability, and you're going to have a lot of balance when you're fighting. Okay? And just give it a chance, open your mind, practice it. I mean, go hard so you can see exactly what's going to happen to you. Right? And try the other two patterns, and you know, work them out and see what works well for you when someone's going at you hard versus someone that's just tap tapping you like in a ring fight, you know. A lot of times guys think it's the same kind of footwork pattern that's going to save the day for them when they're out of the ring, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way, okay. So try those out, let me know what you think, um, subscribe to my channel on YouTube, uh, comment, like the video, let me know uh, if you have any questions on this information and I'll be more than happy to write back to you and, and explain anything or everything that you need to be explained if you don't get it, okay? So, until next time, guys, this is Daniel Sobrano telling you, don't just hit him, punch a hole through him. Take care, and we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.